being is being held on the traditional unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh Coast Salish peoples. He's being live streamed, and the audio and visual recordings will also be available to the public for viewing after the meeting. Footage of the meeting may be viewed inside and outside of Canada. Um, we've all got the meeting decorum. I'm not going to go through that, but I think we're pretty aware of uh, what our decorum is. And and uh, so, without further ado, uh, maybe what we'll do today is just introduce. Uh, we have a few different people here, maybe, and uh, just do a quick run around, and then starting with Kelly. Hi, I'm Kelly Eagleson. I'm VP at McGee. I'm Carmen Shows, trustee, or parent trustee. I'm Chester. Catherine Shipley, Vancouver Secondary. Uh, Chloe McKnight, Vancouver Elementary Teachers. Sean Kelly, DPAC. Archander Sandy, Vancouver Ele uh, Elementary Principals and Vice Principals Association. Okay. Janet yeah. Fraser, Trustee and Committee Member. Hello, Long Trustee. That's Julia Gonzalez, Trustee. Suzanne Hoffman, Superintendent. Okay. And I think we all know the rest of the staff here, so. Um, is there anybody in here? No. Nope. Okay, good. Um, there's no delegation, so on to information items 2.1, Administrative Procedures Update. Uh, Deputy Superintendent, David Nelson. Thank you, Chair. So there's the report. I, I will not um, read through it um, tonight, but it's item 2.1. And the report is a summary of progress um, this year in updating and modernizing the Administrative Procedures Manual. Uh, the report also provides an overview of the final group of APs for this uh, school year that have been updated. And um, there's an outline of the continued work um, of updating and modernizing the uh, Administrative Procedures Manual that we foresee um, for next year. And the report is for information. The, uh, on page two of the report, um, it outlines that the Admin Procedures Working Group met four times this year, uh, the last meeting being on May 9th. There are two appendixes um, attached to the report. Appendix A is an overview and it's uh, pretty impressive if I do say so myself. Mm -hmm. um, thanks to the work of the work that was done um, this year in updating the Administrative Procedures Manual. Uh, Appendix B is the one, two, three, four, five, six um, APs that are included in this report uh, for the information of the committee and for updating on the website tomorrow. The admin procedures have been reviewed by the superintendent um, and approved as per our, uh, our policy handbook. And so we will be proceeding to update those tomorrow in terms of, uh, or update them on the website. Um, in terms of um, the continued work of the admin, of modernizing the admin procedures manual, we did talk on the working group on May 9th about the effectiveness of the working group and uh, the work ahead of us. And there was consensus that the uh, working group was a valuable uh, let members um, these two that are here if they want to speak to that themselves so that was a valuable um, and productive group and we certainly got a lot done and it was a very actually three members here it's a very collaborative uh, process so uh, the recommendation, um, well, it's not a recommendation, the, the intent of staff moving forward is to continue with the working group. Uh, we see that the working group would meet three times per school year next year. If necessary, we could meet more, but once a term seems a reasonable amount of time. And we have outlined our, in this report some of the work that still remains to be done in terms of APs to be updated and APs to be developed that are not yet done um, that uh, we would want to see us finishing up next year. So uh, in terms of my report chair, that is it. The appendixes are there and um, our intent is to continue the work that's been undertaken this year uh, of updating and modernizing Great. the APM. Do you have any questions from the committee? Uh, Sean. Thank you. Um, to the chair, I think we have a DPAC. I, we also believe the working group's been very effective this year. I've been talking to Gord. Uh, he's, I think, interested in continuing with that work. It's been very valuable to us as well. So I think thank you for your efforts on that. But one question that came out of the, the current set of APs that were updated as part of the last batch here 
was uh, around the makeup of the naming committee membership. Um, so it's quite different from the way that the current uh, procedure is. Can, can you explain that a little bit, please? So let me find it. One second, so I can wrap this. All right, so <coughs> we did look as a, at a committee um, at this, at streamlining the process. Um, the intent of this is um, that this, this procedure would apply because we have work to do on the renaming only in the event that you're naming a new facility. So there would not be an existing school staff or an existing parent community be a school so the next one on the horizon will be full harbor um, and the committee actually felt that one of the things that we learned through the process and certainly tim and uh catherine chloe can add to this but one of the things we learned is that if we're going to work with the indigenous community and must come around that renaming process we were told we needed to leave a significant amount of time so our current um and then procedure specifies that we would uh, start the naming process when construction documents are provided or served. Uh, we wanted to back that up. So we see starting it much earlier in the process so that we have enough time to ensure a respectful dialogue with the Musqueam. So with that in mind, we looked at who would be part of that naming committee, given that at this point, that point in time, we would not even have a school principal as we may have once you have construction documents. So we looked at um, a director of instruction, um, the district administrator of Indigenous Ed, a DPAC rep. Uh, rep, we've all it said in the previous policy, a staff rep. So we wanted to provide clarity because it's always been um, a, one of the a teacher reps. So we thought we'd be clear on that and say it would either be a VTF. Uh, it would be a VTF rep, but either VEST or VSTA, depending on which school it was, and then a student rep. So, um, we also, because of the fact that we've embedded in uh, a component where we're going to work closely with Musqueam, we previous, not the Musqueam Nation, we previously had had, which may have been the Musqueam Nation, a community rep, but we see them being involved in the process much, uh, much more in intensely because they will actually be, uh, if we're asking for a name, they would actually be coming up with that. So that's, that, that's why, in, the committee was some of those things which we need to Just to see if there's anybody else first and then come back. Go ahead, Chloe. Sure, thank you. Um, just, yeah, as a, I was one of the members of the working group and um, definitely appreciated the work that we did. I was actually surprised to see we only met four times. It felt like more just because of the amount of work that we did, I guess. Um, and I think uh, having it continue in the next year is really great too because it's, I think, having that, knowing that there is that. Um, structure that we can bring updates or or even new um, administrative procedures to, which has been done as well, has been really helpful. And um, one piece of uh, feedback I just uh, wanted to give as well, um, also on that, the naming new facilities admin procedure, uh, we I brought it back to our executive. And um, uh, one conversation that we had was just around the dual naming, that if, um, if a school is given a dual name, we had a, a conversation around um, the sort of the order in which those names are, um, I guess, given to the school. And our executive supports um, having the um, Indigenous name or Hunkamenum name first. Um, so that it doesn't get lost, I think, because I think with some of like one of our schools, uh, Grandview and Kuniku, or you know, if it's a longer name, you sometimes tend to shorten it to the first piece. And so there was just support around um, being thoughtful around the order that those names are uh, provided in. Come back to you. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Barb. Thank you, Chair. Um, some of our schools are not on Musqueam land. Um, Will the Musqueam peoples contact the nation whose school it is and, and work together, or how, how will that work? So that's uh, true, Chair. Um, we are currently, so just going to back a little bit. So one, if I can comment on Chloe's thing first. So the, the good thing about these is this is, I think, a vast improvement over our naming, what we currently have as an AP. And so in terms of inserting language, uh, for example, the dual uh, 
in, in the event of a dual name, we certainly can bring this back in the fall and look at do we add a sentence saying that in this, that event the name comes first. So happy to bring that forward and that's a revision that we can take that would be quite uh, flexible because the AP. So in relation to your uh, 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 question, um, Trustee Parrott, um, we are currently in conversation. We are very close to having language that we have agreement with the Musqueam Nation around how we would acknowledge those events. So I would anticipate once we have that language, we would be inserting an addition into this to address the specific issues. So, um, but we want to work. We didn't quite have it ready, and I still wanted to bring this forward because I think it's at a place where it's good, and we can continue to make it better. So we will. That will be something that will come forward. That makes sense. Yes. Okay. Thanks, Sean. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just, just to my, my first question on the makeup of the proposed committee. Um, two, two things that stand out. I just want to get clarification. So the omission of a trustee on, on the naming group, on the working group for the naming, is that partially because it's covered as part of policy that trustees will have input prior to the naming beginning? So through the chair, trustees have to approve and set parameters at the start of a process and approve the name at the end. And in fact, all nine trustees um, need to be part of that process. So that was why the working group, we didn't see the need to have a trustee there because they are the decision makers. My, my second question through the chair is the minor semantic change in student representative to VDSC representative. Um, my question is, what about elementary school representation? Because in the, in the current policy or current procedure, it's a seven to 12 student. So we're omitting any elementary school representation if that's the case. Again, through the chair, that's not the intent. The intent would be if, uh, so for example, when we need what traditionally has happened in elementary is we don't um, generally have a student actively participate. We've engaged students in different ways. So for example, when we named Norma Rose Point, we did, we actually, I did it myself, went around to classes and talked to the kids and got ideas from them as to names as a way to engage them in the process. The intent here is really to solidify VDSC's role. So Cole Harbor, although a K-7 school, we will be asking for them to submit a rep. And so that that student, even though they are technically secondary, could engage the, the school, the student community as a representative. So that was the intent of that. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Okay. Um, going on to number 2.2, the board work plan update. Thank you, Chair Valentine. Um, so trustees and the committee have in your package um, a report. This is done in the context of policy two, which is the role of the board. And specifically, we are referencing section eight which is the board development section and specifically section 8.1. It specifies that annually the board, a board development plan will be made aligned with district priorities on board evaluation outcomes. This report does contain a recommendation that can hopefully go forward to the June um, regular meeting of the board. So inside the package available for trustees is an updated board work plan. So staff went through the various goal areas trying to tidy up dates and calendars as well as content. So in some section, sections, for example, we added content that wasn't in previously. And an example of that would be the Indigenous Welcome Figure uh, plan project that is currently underway. So significant pieces of work were added to the board work plan. I would like to acknowledge that pages 27 through 29, um, which reference the long range facilities plan still require an update. Ideally, it probably should have been italicized and say to be revised. And given that our long range facilities plan work didn't finish until Wednesday evening, and then staff needed to determine the actual motions and amended amendments, et cetera, that took place, um, that was not able to be contained in this particular iteration of the plan. But I would be pleased should the committee choose to move this forward to update those three pages um, in advance of the June board meeting and so that the committee notes um, what would be changed on that would be an update on the timeline on page 29 and then also it would simply have the 17 recommendations that were made at the past meeting 
um, be inserted where the current content of the long range facilities plan lies. So that would be on pages 27 through 29. If you do look down, I did reference in the report in the background section, uh, a reference to the annual evaluation of the board's effectiveness be included in the board work plan. Um, and given that the current plan that's submitted before you does not contain any board evaluation outcomes as the current board of education has not yet done a self-assessment or an evaluation of their effectiveness. And so I was unable at this point in time to include that in the plan. Um, with the board chair at a very high level, we have had some conversations about 8.2 and policy two, the annual evaluation and looking to undertake that work as it does say annual. And obviously the first year of this board will come up quite quickly once we come back to school in September. The other part that I would like to point out for trustees and the committee is appendix one, which are the motions. And as much as the board work plan contains um, quite a lengthy amount of work that staff are currently taking on as part of the board's work and direction. When you look at Appendix 1, I'd like to draw to your attention that there are currently 50 motions uh, identified on that page. 30 of them are identified as in progress. Five of them have been captured already in the work plan. Six of them are being sent to committee, whether the Long Range Facilities Plan Committee or the Policy and Governance Committee. Nine kind of fall into an other category and say things such as ongoing. Plus, as well as the 50 recommendations or motions listed here, there are the 17 recommendations that came out of the Long Range Facilities Plan last week. So we are currently undertaking a process for the board just to identify priorities and workflow and workload um, and recognize that this work plan is something that is intended to be over the course of a four year term of the board. So I certainly acknowledge um, that there is time still to work on a number of the things, but there is a lot of work that is identified in the plan as well as with the motions that trustees um, are bringing forward. It is the intent of staff that every June I would bring forward an update for you because we are asked to update the plan annually. So I would see this coming back to next May June's policy and governance committee meeting. And as indicated, there is a recommendation that the updated uh, work plan of the 2019-2022 um, years be approved at the meeting at the end. And I'm happy to answer questions or have staff answer questions on content, on process, or the actual plan itself. Excellent. Thank you very much. Anybody got any burning questions? Oh, Sean, thank you. Thank you. Um, through the chair, I've got several questions, so I can ask one at a time if others want to interject with other questions. Happy to give them the floor. Um, just jump in anywhere here. So one of the things that uh, I think from a DPEX perspective, we'd be quite happy, for example, if the strategic plan came up for discussion earlier than it currently is. Um, not necessarily in favor of the current strategic plan. We'd be very happy to see that updated on the earlier timeline if that's something the board wants to consider. Um, we had a couple questions. Or one question we had around the arts education review that's planned is whether it's a full arts review or just a music review. Or just what? Or just a music review. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, through the chair, at this point in time, it is intended to be with the music review. Through the chair, is there intent to review arts as a holistic program or just music uh, at, 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 you know, at any time? For example, the fine arts, visual arts, uh, etc. cetera. Yeah. Um, my recollection at this point in time as per the motion of the board is to look at music programs, but certainly down the road if a more extensive review of other components of, of arts wanted to be reviewed, that could be something that could be looked at. But in the short term, it was a music program. Okay. Wanted to ask a question, please. Uh, what the Department on Mental Health and Reconciliation Initiative is, please. Through the chair, I'd ask um, Associate Superintendent Langlois to answer that question. Okay. 
can you repeat that? I heard you say the reconciliation and mental health, but I didn't hear the rest of it. It was just a question on just putting some context to what uh, departments on mental health and reconciliation initiative is. It's, it's mentioned, but not fully explained as part of the plan. <clears throat> Through the chair. No. This year um, has begun a process whereby um, Selma Smith and Chaz Desjardins uh, have begun working together and addressing mental health issues from a more holistic standpoint and and trying to um, do a more wraparound approach around mental health. And so that initiative is uh, going to be expanded next year. Thank you. One more question. I'll just start right here if I may, unless somebody else. I'm not looking at anything. I'm just looking around. Yeah. Sorry, thank you. Um, just through the chair. It's not clear what, quote, strategic communications approach means. Um, it's mentioned on page, or on the page reference right now. Um, but can, can that be explained what that, that means? I'm sorry, is it, could you, do you know the page you're referring to? I, I can find it, sorry. Yeah, there's the electronic copy while inside the VSB. that you're seeing it is it on the bulleted list or up at the top very bottom very bottom thank you through the chair i would interpret that and this part was written by our communications director who's not here today um, but i would assume that the reference to that is the work that we have been jointly working on um, an ap with respect to communications and engagement and consultation within our community okay. i appreciate though that that's not specified for any next Okay, well, thank you very much then. Um, can we, can someone from our committee make him a recommendation to bring it to the board? Yes, Don? Okay, and we'll go ahead and thank you very much. Great, thank you very much, thank you. Superintendent? Um, items for approval. 1.1 policy team on the future. Uh, so item 4.1 um, is a proposed amendment to policy two over the board. So during the, uh, the school year, the naming and renaming working group has been working and uh, undertaking the task of uh, looking at two existing procedures. And uh, tonight, admin procedure 501 shared as part of the previous report. Uh, the, at the April 10th um, meeting of the Policy and Governance Committee, there was a request, a request from the board chair that staff consider some possible changes to Policy 2 in order to align uh, more closely with the administrative procedure for uh, naming new facilities, which is the 501. So in conducting that review, um, staff looked at, at the current wording of um, sec policy two, uh, subsection three, which reads, the board will provide direction at the commencement of the naming or renaming process and approve the naming or renaming of educational facilities and land. And it's proposed um, that revision, revision to section three would include the following sentence. When, when naming new school facilities, the board will only consider place-based names. Uh, so the recommendation for the consideration of the committee and uh, the board, if the committee deems to move it forward, is, is that the policy to role of the board additional responsibilities uh, Number three will now read or would read the board will provide direction at the commencement of the naming or renaming process and approve the naming or renaming of educational facilities and land. With the addition of when naming a new when naming new school facilities, the board will only consider place-based names. Uh, the rationale for that is the committee and 
through the work of the Canadian Procedures Working Group as well as the naming and renaming group. Um, put uh, and very clearly into the naming new school facilities, uh, AP, the intent to name new school facilities uh, after base-based uh, base names. So this amendment to the policy as written is, although not necessary, would provide that clarity because the policy as written could um, provide trustees with the option to direct the committee to name a school um, other than a place-based name. So that because the policy as it says is the board will provide direction, so the board could provide direction to name a new school facility after an individual, for example. Um, so it would provide the clarity that the direction would be to name a school after a place based Again, it's for the consideration of trustees, it would uh, provide greater alignment between the AP and board policy. Okay, thank you, David, and the committee for all your hard work. Um, before I talk, look at the trustees, uh, are there any questions around the table about this? Um, this language or it's been proposed. Are we okay with that? Okay, then committee members, um, are we good for putting this thing forward to the to the board? Alan, are you good? Okay. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you. Uh, advocacy committee update. Um, oh no, sorry, trustee motion on anti-racism, Janet Fraser's. You're going to read, read. I can um, speak to I won't read yeah. the entire report, right. I, but um, you know, the, the key pieces are, you know, the board is has is committed to and has recently recommitted to eliminating racism in schools. And uh, when we look at when I look at our policy uh, board policies and our administrative procedures, I think some of the pieces that are in the administrative procedures about the high level pieces at the beginning of the um, APs are something that I think could be uh, captured in policy to give a better um, sense of the commitment of the board to. <laughs> and I think it would be helpful if staff could look at those uh, the APs that cover these areas and see what pieces of the language have the potential policy <coughs> to show um, this is the commitment of the board uh, and not that it's not the commitment of the superintendent under the APs but it is the commitment of the board itself and we have this opportunity um, uh, to, to make some adjustments. So, Chair, this came to the board this is a and it's committee. coming now um, to the committee for input prior to going back to the board. Ah. Okay. Don't see any. Uh, yes, okay, go ahead, Chloe. Um, well, just uh, certainly speaking uh, in support of this, and I think um, just in the report where it talks about the different places it could be included, um, the mention of including it into policy one, which is the foundational statements, I think would be very appropriate because I think that should be the foundation that the school board is um, operating on in terms of the elimination of racism. So um, I think any any place, any opportunity to get that into policy procedure, um, we should take the advantage to get it in there. Great, thanks for your input. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, moving forward to the board. Okay. And um, information items the advocacy committee uh, update. Trustee uh, Long. Um, the advocacy committee met um, two times, March 12th and May 6th. Uh, we had two meetings and of the two meetings, there are basically three agenda items that are moving forward in terms of discussion and, and, and direction. One is there is a, and I brought, I didn't bring it, I brought it, but I don't know where it went now. Um, going back to some of the historical parts of the advocacy committee, 
um, when it all began, um, there were uh, ribbons that were produced for, for everyone in the district and, and throughout. And this was, uh, it was People for Public Education. And um, one of the items is that the, the advocacy committee will be moving forward with generating a first batch to see how um, uh, interesting turning these ribbons into pins and in changing possibly people for public education to something else we're having a discussion a celebration for public education or something like that also uh, in the future um, after the first batch also thinking of changing the language possibly and also the way back then this is in 2002 2003 these were um we're going to be changing possibly to gender neutral we have um, our advocacy, our communications department is just looking into that and we'll have a further discussion of how that ribbon will, will look, the ribbon turning into a pin. So that's one thing and we're hoping to get that uh, completed by uh, September and then that will be something that how that, if there's interest in that, whether we expand on that uh, further. Okay, and also possibly the language with regards to people for public education, if we can change them to different languages as well. Secondly, we were working on a, it started with an Instagram direction, um, but it's, it's turned into a weekly, each stakeholder group will produce um, a, a write-up and a picture uh, with regards to supporting and participating in in, in public education, something that will be will work with the um, communications department and each stakeholder group will take a week in the year and produce something that will go into our either our website and or Facebook. Um, something that promotes public education and something that is informative um, as well as um, entertaining to attract um, people and in support of public education. Um, all stakeholders, stakeholder groups um, uh, will be participating or, you know, they're invited to participate and a few um, we're going to have a, a calendar of when they will be um, submitting theirs. Um, there will be a template made by the communications group. So to have it very clear and very simplified, but something that promotes their their group um, and how they're uh, working and, and supporting public education. I think that's something that I felt was somewhat missing is um, the community at large and the understanding of, of public education and the importance of public education and the positive direction of public education. So. Um, uh, that is something that will be starting in September and first the first week I suggest the trustees will be submitting the first. I was talking to VDSC um, there um, just a little more uh, explanation and when we get the template out uh, hopefully that goes and starts rolling along. So something that covers off the whole year and possibly something that's informative for in the future that um, Look, look it back on that and, and see how um, something that informs, for example, um, uh, something that is wet kindergarten registration uh, those days, something that's informative, but something that's use, very useful. Um, thirdly, uh, direction is we're working on an advocacy toolkit and this goes back to the origination of the advocacy committee at the Vancouver School Board. Um, and originally there was a your uh, your advocacy toolkit, which um, includes all the uh, pieces of um, all the uh, agenda items, all the items with regards to advocating. I, I know the needs budget committee is producing something and that that's an advocacy. Um, there is also the um, uh, 
uh, direction with regards to area standards and other things that we the board has adopted with regards to advocating for for public education so this advocacy toolkit um, and we're working on the graphics i have some of the some of the preliminary um, items um, this is the one that was originated a long time ago so there would be some, something from the the board signed by the chair with regards to um, supporting uh, public education and the importance of advocacy for it and that will link into the board's strategic plan and one of the four main goals and this will be written in here one of the four main goals of the to the strategic plan is advocating for public education and supporting effective communication, engagement, and community partnerships. There will also be a in the toolkit a, a description of the importance of public education. Um, public, education public education is a fundamental human right and a strong, stable public school system. And there's a there's a paragraph about that. Also in there, there's a um, uh, how to get the word out, how to showcase your school, um, how to reach out to local organizations, um, suggestions for letters to the editor, to local media, and talking with your MLAs and the provincial government. So there will be a list of the trustees to reach out to the trustees. There will be a list of the MLAs to reach out to your MLAs and, and, and such things. So. Um, sort of the general idea is there. So we still have to work with the communications department still and to get it into a format um, like, the, like the original one. Um, and then that will upload to the website. And from there, um, we'll have a further discussion of if, if there will be hard copies and uh, how, how we move forward with that. So specifically in, in those four, three areas that the advocacy committee is, is moving forward. That's fantastic. That's great, great news. Okay, well, that's just for information and if there's anybody else that uh, wants, yes, go ahead. I Kathy. just want to add that it was, um, we met twice and they were both uh, very rich conversations in the sense that it was quite organic. And I think everyone at the table really spoke their mind freely and it moved around and we realized it's part advocacy part sort of PR success I mean it was uh, it was took quite a while to sort of really, um, the difference between the two and so that was very helpful I think once we landed on it so that it was clearer than different kinds of projects belong in different places so um, I think it was a it was a good conversation and, and we look forward to seeing how it rolls out yeah I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, that's great stuff. Okay. Thank you. Well, um, so um, this is the last meeting of the uh, for the year. So I, I first of all, I just wanted to really thank the committee members and the stakeholders for your input and all the work that you've been doing and this exciting stuff that's coming forward for the fall. And uh, our next meeting will be on October 16th at 5 p.m. Yes, uh, Chair, just uh, prior to uh, our adjourning, if I could have an opportunity to add two items quickly, not meeting items, but um, one is just, I know you've probably all noticed the beautiful art around you. So just a reminder, and if you didn't know, tomorrow is the open house for the heirs, um, artist and studio um, program at 4 to 6 p.m. here, and there's more art out in there, and it looks like we're going to have a bit of time between meetings, so please take the opportunity to look and if you can come and join us tomorrow and also uh, chair i did also want to particularly acknowledge chloe right um president of Vesta, as this will be her last meeting as yeah. best president um in her role so, uh, so thank you okay thank you everyone okay <laughs> Yeah, really.